Hey there, Levy here and welcome to the third video of the Albion Online Weapon Overview series. In this series we will go over each one of the 15 weapon masteries you can progress in, with today's mastery being the bow. With each one of the 15 masteries having 7 specializations, we are looking at a total of 105 different weapons you can choose from, which is a pretty overwhelming amount of choices. So in this series, the goal is to provide useful information you can learn from that will help you make your decisions. To help you navigate, I've put a bunch of timestamps below in case you are only interested in specific parts. But if you are interested in this specific weapon tree, I recommend you watch the entire video. If you do end up liking this video, consider subscribing, which is free and supports the channel. If you wish to support this channel even further, you can do this through Patreon for as little as 1 euro a month and also get some special perks in return, such as the Patreon role on Discord. More information about that in the description below. If you play a class that uses the bow such as an archer or ranger in other games, there is a big chance you'll immediately start looking for it in Albion Online as well. The nice thing about the bow as a weapon is that no matter what game you play, it always has a similar playstyle. And in this game it is no different. With 7 different bows to choose from, all together covering the different contents the game has to offer, you'll be an asset that will always have a role in any setting as a ranged damage dealer. Positioning, keeping your distance, knowing your range and kiting are all terms you are familiar with and things you will have to apply here as well. The bows in Albion also have multiple skills that will help you do this, such as the frost shot that will make you leap backwards, or the ray of light that roots your enemies in place. Of course, it's not only about defense with the bows, and surely you have some very high range skills that have the potential to do insane amounts of damage as well, allowing you to snipe entire hordes of enemies from places they can't even reach. I think the bows are a great choice for beginners that want to take the role of a ranged damage dealer. The bows are easy to get into and very straightforward in their playstyle, and have a place in any group and any content. As you enter the more competitive areas of the game, your biggest challenge will be positioning and holding on to your most special arrow, only for you to use it at the exact right moment. You can see the different skills and passives you unlock as you level up the mastery, and within this I think there are two unlocks that are worth mentioning. The first one is the attack speed passive, which you unlock at level 50, which is a very good passive to have on the bows, especially when your special ability revolves around your basic attacks, such as with the Whispering Bow. The Whispering Bow increases your normal attack range, grants you a bit of attack speed, and each normal attack will do a big chunk of additional magic damage. Therefore, having even more attack speed through your passive will enhance all these effects even more. The second unlock that's worth mentioning is the Ray of Light, which you unlock at level 70. Although the Frost Shot slows your enemies, it doesn't do any damage. The Ray of Light on the other hand is your only other crowd control ability amongst the W skills, which also does a fair amount of damage. Luckily, both of these unlocks have a very situational use, and you'll most likely be using other passives and W skills throughout your gameplay, which you have unlocked by default or unlock very early on. Now let's take a look at the Q skills on the bows. Multishot is great to keep enemies away from you. Aside from doing damage with this skill, you also knock enemies hit away. As a ranged DPS, it's crucial you don't let anyone near you. Therefore, the skill is really great to use. There is a slight cast time to the skill, but even then, it will be very hard for enemies to react to it. You will especially want to use the skill when you are fighting melee players or multiple players that try to jump your back line. Deadly Shot is your Q skill with the most range, allowing you to poke your enemies from afar. It does damage to every one hit and also decreases their resistances, which stacks up to 3 times. Especially when doing PvE, you will want to use the skill since the resistance reduction helps speed things up for you and your group. And when you are fighting ranged enemies or need to keep your distance, you will want to use the skill in PvP. It's basically a skill that has enough range to poke your enemies with. However, it is a skill shot and missing it in a 1 vs 1 can heavily affect your overall damage and the outcome of the fight. So your aim has to be on point. 
The poisoned arrow is used less in general since it has a more specific use and is more susceptible to enemy skills that can harm you, such as Reflect. Nonetheless, it is a good skill to keep the pressure on your enemy since it is a dot that will keep ticking every second and stacks up to 3 times, making for a lot of damage even when you are on the move. And since it isn't a skill shot, you are guaranteed to land it. This skill can be good in 1 versus 1s, but it's very situational. On that note, it is a single target skill, whilst the other two Q skills are AoEs as we have covered. We already talked a bit about the W skills in the skill unlocks, and now we'll go in depth on each one of them. In PvE, you'll always be using the explosive arrows, and in some PvP situations, you'll want to use it as well. Your next 10 attacks will explode on contact, doing AoE damage to everyone within 5 meters of your target. The great thing about this skill is that normal attacks as well as spells can activate it. So if you activate explosive arrows and then shoot a deadly shot and hit multiple enemies, each one of the enemies hit will trigger one of your 10 explosive arrows. If you combine the explosive arrows together with a strong AoE skill, you will be dishing out a lot of extra damage. This skill is great for both PvE and PvP, and since you have it unlocked by default, you can start using it right away. Do keep in mind that since it is a buff, it can be purged, which is one of its weaknesses. Frost Shot is the best mobility option amongst your W skills. It's also one of the two skills that have crowd control, but in trade for all of this, it doesn't affect your outgoing damage. We already went over the fact that keeping your distance as a bow user is very important, and the Frost Shot is really great for that. The backward sleep already has plenty of mobility, but if your enemies also happen to be right in front of you, and if you hit them when you use it, they will also be slowed for a noticeable amount of time. This skill is simply amazing when you need that extra mobility, when you need to keep your distance or kite your targets. But I do feel like I need to warn you, you can't get used to this skill too much if you plan on doing a lot of group content, since it doesn't provide value to most of the groups you will find yourself in. The value will often be in either explosive arrows or ray of light when you are in a group. So my advice is to learn positioning and kiting without relying on frost shot too much. Speed shot is a skill that isn't really used that much. Although the idea is nice since you have a bit of damage, have your movement and attack speed increased, which pretty much sounds like everything an archer needs, it's the least played W skill since the other W skills provide more overall value. The fact is that if you need mobility, you take frost shot. If you need damage, you take ray of light or explosive arrows. And attack speed you often get from other sources already. However, it's still a viable skill that can be used, but it's just for very specific purposes. As a beginner, I do not recommend you to use this skill and advise you to go with any of the other W skills instead. Finally, the Ray of Light, which is a very powerful skill that's good for bursting targets or catching people who try to run. You do a good chunk of damage with this skill and root any of the enemies hit. It's a viable yet pretty situational pick for various content, but there is a difficulty to it since it is a skill shot. Missing your W on the boss can be very unforgiving. Missing the Ray of Light would mean missing both the crowd control and the damage, which just might be crucial, and the exact reason why you took the Ray of Light in the first place. The one thing it does have as an advantage over the other W skills is that the damage is instant, and since it does a good bit of it, it really helps burst your targets down. Now let's take a look at your passives. Slow Poison is a passive you'll only want to use in a 1 vs 1 fight and only if you really need the tiny slow it provides. It's great to have that extra bit of CC through your passive, but it might not always be as viable since you might find yourself in extended fights quite often where you might run into energy issues. Which takes us to the second passive, Energetic, which restores a bit of energy with every normal attack and is the preferred passive for PvE. This passive is pretty much your go-to since you typically don't build any energy regen in your build as an archer. So even if it's just a little, every normal attack, this passive ensures you don't run into energy issues. The piercing arrows passive sounds strong and it could work very well against the toughest of the bosses, such as the bosses in the Avalonian raids or legendary bosses in group dungeons. But in general, this passive isn't ever used. Even if you are playing in a group setting, you might still run into energy issues. Therefore, this passive is overshadowed by the energetic passive once again. This is a passive that's only ever used when you absolutely don't need any of the other passives. 
Nonetheless, it is the only passive that affects the DPS of your entire party, which is a pretty unique thing for a passive to have as a perk. And then the attack speed passive, which I've briefly explained already, which can be really great for specific bows, such as with the regular bow. If you are using a bow build where your normal attacks play a big role, then you most likely want to take the attack speed passive, since it will enhance the effects by allowing you to shoot your normal attacks much quicker. A situational but very strong passive. Do be careful that if you have a lot of attack speed modifiers in your build already, this passive might put you over the attack speed cap and render it pretty much a waste of a choice. In that case, it's much better to take a very different passive. And now it's time to go over each one of the 7 bows. Starting with the most popular one, which is the regular bow. Now this weapon is just called bow, however to distinguish it from the other bows, players tend to call it the regular bow. The special ability, Enchanted Quiver, gives you a bunch of enchanted arrows that will increase your normal attack damage and attack speed. An effect that stacks up to 6 times. Once you reach the max stacks, you also reduce your enemy's resistances. I've already talked about bows that revolve around their normal attacks, and as you can see, the regular bow is one of them. These bows typically make for insane burst damage, in trade for not having any AoE to their special ability. This makes them very good at small scale content, where you need to burst one target down very quickly. The regular bow is played in content such as the Corrupted Dungeons, that's 1 vs 1, Hellgates, both 2 vs 2s and 5 vs 5s, Arenas, Roads of Avalon and even the very competitive Crystal League. It's alright for solo PvE as well, since it makes for easy boss killing, and your Q and W provide plenty AoE to clear the rest of the monsters. As you know by now, the explosive arrows are also triggered by normal attacks, so combining it with the regular bow's special ability can still make for some good AoE clearing or even additional burst damage. The weakness to the special ability, however, is that it's a buff, so it can't be purged. Once you have your attack speed going, you can simply 100 to 0 someone in the blink of an eye with this bow. Whilst we are on the subject of bows that revolve around their normal attacks, let's also talk about the Whispering Bow. A little overshadowed by the regular bow, but it has a pretty unique special ability that doesn't require any ramp up unlike the regular bow. The special ability Undead Arrows increases your normal attack range and attack speed and also deals additional magic damage with every normal attack. This is just insanely strong and scary, cause by default, the bows already have quite some range, and it's difficult enough to get to them as it is. Just like the regular bow, the whispering bow is single target, and you'll also be able to burst your target down very quickly. The advantage the special ability has over the regular bow is that it can't be purged. It's a toggle skill, meaning you decide when you want to turn it on or turn it off. This advantage comes with a negative, however, which is that whenever you do have it activated, your damage taken is increased by 35%. So it's very important to turn the skill off when you know you're going to start taking damage or when you lose value from it being activated. The content this bow is good for is the same as the regular bow, since they have a similar purpose, which is to burst someone down real quick. And since this bow also increases your range, it's also a really great pick for ganking, since you can easily dismount someone. Before we head into AoE territory, we first need to cover the War Bow, which doesn't revolve around its basic attacks like the Whispering Bow and Regular Bow, but has a special ability that only hits one target. The War Bow's special ability will fire a magic arrow that does more damage the further your target is. With 26 meter range on this skill and only 10 seconds cooldown, this skill really makes for a lot of pressure on your enemy. With a special ability like this, it shouldn't come as a surprise that the Warbow is the king of kiting amongst the bows. It's especially good for 1 vs 1s in any type of content, be it corrupted dungeons or open world, but it does kind of stop there. The damage your special ability does is not enough to burst someone down, so for coordinated small scale content, you want to use the regular bow or whispering bow instead. And for anything larger than small scale, you really want to have AoE with you. So see the Warbow as a specialized tool that adds a ton of pressure to your kiting and use it for that purpose only. And be careful against players with Reflect since the arrow travels pretty slowly, which gives enemies plenty of time to react to it. Nonetheless, since the special ability does have a very low cooldown, you should be able to shoot a couple of them before their Reflect is back up, so it's not like your enemy will be able to Reflect each one of your magic arrows. 
And now it's time to head into AoE territory, starting with the Bow of Baden, which has seen a huge rise in popularity due to the roads of Avalon and Corrupted Dungeons. I do have a guide on this bow in which I explain pretty much everything there is to about it, such as what types of content to use it in, together with builds for the different types of content. So if you wish to learn more about the Bow of Baden specifically, I recommend you watch that one. Nonetheless, I do want to quickly go over this bow as well. Your special ability is called Raging Storm, and when you use it you shoot a lightning arrow that creates a storm cloud upon impact. It's crucial you hit at least one target with this skill, otherwise it won't go off. The storm cloud constantly hits enemies that stand within it and does damage and interrupts their spell casting. Even when the enemies leave the AoE, they still get hit for an additional 7 times. So this skill is basically an AoE dot that also interrupts spell casting. It's a really strong skill with a lot of zoning potential, which makes it ideal for content such as the Roads of Avalon and medium skill PvP. It's also the best bow for fame farming in a group setting amongst the bows, because it just does a ton of AoE damage and disables the mobs from using some of their strongest abilities. You typically don't see this weapon being used in ZvZ, despite sounding like the perfect weapon for it, and that's because the insane amount of damage you do can be easily reflected, which is a strong counter against this weapon. Another bow that does a lot of AoE damage and can't be reflected, making it the ideal weapon for large skill content, is the Wailing Bow. You fire a demonic arrow that pierces through your enemies, which becomes stronger with each enemy hit. If you hit at least 4 enemies, your arrow's damage output almost doubles. This bow is pretty much only played in ZvZ content, making the only downside to it pretty much the fact it's a specialized weapon for specific content. One important thing you should know about using the Wailing Bow in ZvZ is that it's really important you have explosive arrows on your W and activate the explosive arrows before you shoot your demonic arrow since this will make for a lot of additional damage. When playing the Wailing Bow you will often find yourself using builds that include items that increase your damage such as the Royal Hood and Royal Sandals. Apart from all of that, it's important to be patient when you play the Wailing Bow and have your tanks group the enemies together before you shoot your demonic arrow. So when you hear an engage is about to happen, start building your royal hood stacks, turn your royal sandals on, activate your explosive arrows and patiently wait for the right moment to press on E. Another bow that is great for large scale content is the Mist Piercer. The Mist Piercer is the newest addition to the bows with the introduction of the Avalonian weapons and has been a very favorite pick for both medium and large scale content ever since. Your special ability, Lucent Hawk, can be fired 4 times before the ability goes on cooldown. Each shot does have a cast time to it, but in between the shots you can reposition yourself if you would like to. The things that apply to the Wailing Bow pretty much apply to the Mist Piercer as well, with the major difference being that the special ability of the Mist Piercer can be reflected. So you have to be very careful when you use this bow. It could be wise to take frost shot on your W whenever you play the mist piercer to make positioning in between the shots easier. And lastly the longbow, which unfortunately has lost the battle against time. People used to play this bow a lot, but over time as nerfs happened, metas changed and a lot more mobility skills have been added, it has become very difficult to optimize the special ability of this bow in PvP. Rain of Arrows is a skill which channels a massive volley of arrows into a location where enemies hit, take damage and get slowed. The fill channel lasts 2.3 seconds and hits a total of 6 times. It only has 15 seconds cooldown which is half the cooldown of all the other bows that have an AoE as their special ability. The biggest difficulty of this bow in its current state is in its range, which is also why it's not being played. The range is only 15 meters, so you need to be pretty close to the location where you wish to channel the skill. So you need to be up close and you need to channel the ability which just is a combination that doesn't float well for a ranged class. Although the special ability does insane amounts of damage, especially when paired with explosive arrows, the longbow is completely overshadowed by all the other bows. It used to be played in both medium and large scale content, and although you don't want to play it there any longer, you can still use it when fame farming solo or in a group, since it still has great AoE damage that makes for fast clearing. So in conclusion, if you want to play as a ranged damage dealer that can dish out lots of damage from afar, have a playstyle in which you don't allow your enemies to get even close to you, the bow weapon tree might just be the one for you. As always, do let me know what you thought of this guide and if you have any additions to it, feel free to share them in the comments below. 
And if you like this video, make sure to press that thumbs up. Take care for now and I'll see you next time.